You can download Response 2000 from Professor Bentz's website. Here, this is the download link. You can also get uh, the program documentation, which is pretty useful. And I think uh, my recommendation to any user would be to read uh, this manual before you get started. Response 2000 is a sectional analysis method, and it's based on the modified compression field theory. Uh, this is a famous commonly used theory by Professor Vic Yuan Collins from the University of Toronto, and you can download and read the papers. One thing I need to note before showing you uh, Response 2000, Response is for slender sections because it enforces plain sections remain plain hypothesis. If you have a deep section, you shouldn't be using Response 2000. The easiest way is to quick define. You can come here and you can start uh, your analysis by inputting your material strengths. You can give it a name as well as this is my, uh, these are my initials. Section size, you can pick any section you like. I'm going to go with 350. Top and bottom reinforcement, let's just go with four number five at the top, four number nine at the bottom. Modified compression field theory is very useful uh, if you want to consider shear effects, that is shear failures, interaction between shear force, axial force bending moment. For that reason, uh, you need to define the stirrup or tie properties carefully. Uh, here, uh, depending on the situation, uh, my design has open stirrups. And um, this is, let's say, number 4, 250 spacing. Clear cover, let's make it uh, 35. Uh, I don't have any pre-stressing. I finished it. So you can see the entire input. Uh, you can also get calculated values for your gross concrete section properties as well as transformed section properties. If you are doing hand calculations, these are pretty useful. You can also get rebar and concrete stress strain response automatically calculated by the program. Not necessarily calculated, but assumed. We input 400 and what's assumed is Ultima 600 as well as a rupture strain, uh, which is almost 140 milli strain or 14% elongation is uh, assumed for the rupture. These are concrete properties. Uh, you can change them uh, if you want. You can come and play with any material properties that is possible. If you want to do a sectional analysis, uh, that's very simple. You just click on sectional analysis. Uh, this is going to give you moment curvature result. And as you can see, uh, you can see the sectional forces. Moment is going to be the one which is included. Axial force is zero, shear force is zero. They are not considered. If you want to consider, uh, I'm guessing you want to consider shear as well as axial forces because that's a good reason why you would want to use response 2000. You need to come and define your loads in this menu. I'm defining quite significant axial compression minus 500. Uh, if you have only single load case, single analysis, you need to use the left side. But typically, I like to use the right side of it because I like to get the full response, which is a pushover analysis uh, type of response. And I can see uh, the stages of nonlinear behavior. Modified compression field theory requires uh, the ratio between moment and shear force. So first of all, you need to determine what section you are checking. Are you checking it at the mid span? Are you checking it a certain distance away from the support? Based on that, you need to draw the diagrams moment and shear, and you need to get the ratio. In this example, let's go with one moment and 0.5 shear force. So that is it. And then if I do sectional response analysis again, you can see the axial force considered. You can see moment considered. So the ratio is 0 0.5 as if as exactly I input it. You can see this is failing in shear. Uh, I, I can see 
uh, yielding of stirrups as well as reinforcement at the bottom layer. This is the complete pushover type of response and you can see uh, different forces at different uh, levels. You can see the strain conditions. Top is this value, which is compression. Bottom is that value. So it's pretty educational. Uh, you can use this to verify your hand calculations. If you want to get the interaction diagrams, you can get it, which is very useful uh, because it really takes a very long time to do it using other methods. For example, let's get moment shear interaction. It's going to take a while, but uh, relatively fast, within a couple of minutes, it will give you the envelope, which is the red um, curve outside these uh, dots. Each dot represents one analysis, and you can see the program is uh, plotting uh, loss of pushover curves. So it shouldn't take too long, maybe a couple of minutes, and then this would stop, uh, and you would be able to click on the envelope points and see the corresponding result. Um, so as you can see, increased moment reduces the shear capacity, and so on. Uh, you can let me... I think, is it finished? I'm guessing it's finished. Uh, let me look at, for example, axial force shear interaction. Uh, this is, again, it's the same process. It sketches it. I'm going to stop that. We don't need uh, the full results. Uh, the version I'm using is the beta version. So it has, this number shouldn't be here, but if you download it from the web, that, that shouldn't be there. So you should get the full version, not the beta version. You can also do full members design. So if you have a beam analysis, it's very useful. You can consider a beam. This is half of it. It has to be symmetrical or you can idealize it as symmetrical. You can input uh, the load types. This is the moment diagram. You can input support conditions on the left, on the right. Length subject to shear is the distance between your support as well as the point load application point or mid span if you have a UDL. Uh, axial force, you can put it here. Now, we are not using that um, load input dialog because that was for the sectional analysis. This is a member analysis. But again, the member should be slender or you should be checking the slender part of a member for this to work out. And then I'm just coming here and then saying uh, member response. It's going to show you the result. And again, lots of analyses uh, going on. You will see the deflected shape. You would see the crack pattern. You can see the shear cracking. I intentionally put stirrups a little bit light. So this member is uh, having lots of shear influences. Uh, one thing which is good for member analysis is deflections. Deflection calculation is usually very well involved. Uh, you need to consider so many things. Uh, so this would save you a lot of time uh, if you want to get deflections using a full nonlinear crack response. The results we got from this analysis are unfactored. So we didn't apply any material resistance factors. We didn't do LRFD. And the numbers represents expected failure condition. No safety margin, no safety factor considered. Uh, in order to consider that, you can come here and you can input your uh, reduction coefficients. In, if you are using ACI, uh, steel is constant, but Concrete coefficient changes depending on the failure mode. If you have shear failure, it's a little bit lower than if you have a flexural failure. So you may want to put a number here, do the analysis, and then come back and fix it, fine-tune it um, with the final, based on the final failure mode. This is Canadian code. Uh, coefficients do not change. It's always the same coefficient. So if you are going with Canadian code, you can just click on this. Uh, you also have option to change the units um, then you are using response. File all right, it's just, you know, it's the saving the file um, on top of an existing file. That's a good feature. So that's also a good reminder that you need to save this. It's just the one, one file to save, you know, in case something happens, you want to have the model. Uh, so now we applied factors and you will see that strain hardening part is gone. Um, you have a flat, uh, sorry, flat plateau uh, for design purpose and everything you can repeat everything and the numbers should be here should correspond to uh, your 
design loads you should be able to use them uh, for your limit states design in order to get a little bit more information uh, about reinforcement uh, properties uh, we created a user bulletin you can visit our university website which is this address and you can go into publications you can find also lots of other things but i'm just going to show you uh, user bulletin number five so if you look at this uh, it would give you uh, some information for um, different rebar grades what number to assume if you don't know uh, we are giving you some logical numbers slightly perhaps on the conservative side but not uh, not overly conservative so uh, you can just benefit from this uh, document uh, for your analysis